realistic shooter games in VR are very impressive. I mean, you've got a real-sized human target that you're shooting at with a real-sized gun that you're holding in your hands. When, when you move your hands, your gun moves with you. If you want to reload, it's a fully realistic reload. You're not just pressing the R button on your keyboard. You're actually taking the mag out, throwing it on the ground, grabbing a new mag from a mag pouch, and putting it in the gun and racking the bolt back. It's a very, very different experience and something that I feel like you have to at least try once before you even give a review on it because it's so cool. Like VR is so cool. Even like playing VR Skyrim is cool. Being able to walk up to people and have them be fully sized people is so weird. It is near real and it's very instinctual and it's something that it's just, it's, it's just impressive to me. But there's also this uncanny valley which is basically a term that's used for cartoons when they get just a little bit too realistic when when something gets too close to the human face but it's not quite there it creates this really uncomfortable looking droid looking robot thing that you know isn't real but it's so close to humans that it almost turns into creepy. But when you watch Toy Story and Woody's face is is this long and tall it doesn't seem creepy because you your mind knows that that's not a human that that isn't a, a fictional character that's something that's similar to VR where when you're holding a rifle you have to be very confident about that rifle that you're holding in your hands or it ends up just being a kind of weird experience with guns now this video isn't anything going against what the game developers uh, for VR are doing uh, Pavlov and also onward man those games are impressive and those game developers are doing the best with the tools that they've got to create an awesome experience. And I definitely suggest if you do have VR, check out Onward and Pavlov. But I think that there's some technical drawbacks to VR that hold us back from what we could really be experiencing right now in VR. First off, let's talk about what I call the basis of any shooter. This is like the root of the tree, the stump of the tree. This is going to be the most important structural part of the rest of the entire game. That's shooting mechanics. Whenever I kind of review a game, uh, mouse acceleration, uh, the way the guns feel in the player's hands, the hit fire, the aiming down sight, that all comes into effect in the most basic form of review like at least this game got a 4 out of 10 because the weapon mechanics feel good if there's nothing else it at least gets a 4 out of 10 if the weapon mechanics are good so in VR weapon mechanics are quite interesting for pistols they're fine you're holding one controller with one point of contact to whatever you're holding so that makes sense you're holding one controller for one point of contact but when we go for rifles this is where it changes a little bit First off, in real life, I'm going to show you a showcase of me right now. This is a sniper rifle. This has three points of contact, the foregrip, the pistol grip, and the stock against the shoulder. As you can see, when I point this gun around, the stock is anchored to my shoulder because I'm holding the rifle back against my shoulder, while my hands are the things that are manipulating the direction that the rifle goes. This is how guns are held in real life, and this is why you can shoot accurately with a gun in real life. This is a different rifle with more of a pistol grip pistol grip instead of just a sniper rifle stock and this rifle is the exact same you can see that although it is a different styled weapon you can still hold the weapon the same way uh, it's still anchored to my shoulder with the stock and therefore there's three points of contact in total but what if we fold the stock on this AKS 74 in then it becomes two points of contact and you can see I can manipulate the gun a lot more. This is for when you're like in a vehicle or something, you need to get out of a vehicle because there's usually not much long distance space when you're in a driver's seat of a car or something. So you can tell here my aiming is going to be a little bit more floppy because again, I'm not anchored to my shoulder, but let's go down to what VR is. In VR, you're holding two little sticks out in front of you and these sticks aren't connected in any way. So they can be pushed forwards and backwards from each other and it creates a very awkward experience for holding a rifle in a video game. And why is this? Well, they're not connected. The two controllers in your hand aren't connected to each other. What this feels like instead of holding a rifle in VR is holding two pistols and then through both of the iron sights of the pistols, you're trying to match them up and then aim at a target that's 50 yards away. And this causes a problem because let's go back to the AKS 
uh, without the stock. Let's see with the folded with the folded stock. This is a setup where there is a straight line between the two contact points where there's not a shoulder to hold the weapon back and really anchor it. What is anchoring the weapon right now is the fact that it is a rigid object, that the handguard and the pistol grip are connected by a solid object, and that solid object never bends, and additionally, the weapon has weight to it. Small little twitches in my movement aren't really gonna do much to this weapon because it is a six, seven pound rifle, and it's not gonna move much to small movements. Now, if we were to hollow out this rifle and make it uh, half a pound, then every little shake and stutter I would have with my hands would go straight into the rifle and it'd be hard to control because it's such a lightweight object. This is where we go back into VR. When we're playing with VR, we're holding basically two pistols up in front of us and those two pistols weigh nothing. So you have extra weird shakiness to your hands. Additionally, you have no rigid line between your controllers. Therefore, aiming itself, just aiming a rifle by itself, is a challenge in VR. You can see commonly we can't hit targets that are at 100 meters away. And with a PC mouse and keyboard, it's easy to do that. You just move your mouse on top of the target and click the button. In this, it's a whole different game because you're trying to balance two different controllers that are trying to be a single controller. Now again, this isn't anything that has to do with the game developers at all. I think they make awesome games, but it's just the hardware itself of the of the Vive and the Oculus that makes it quite awkward to play shooter games in VR. It's not perfect yet. So we've obviously identified the problem here, but what could possibly be the solution for this? Well, I'm not educated in a ton of VR tech myself, but I think it would be a useful thing for VR shooter players to have gloves. These gloves would be able to track each and every finger, so you could grab a grenade off your chest, pull the pin with your pointer and thumb off your left hand, and then throw it with your right hand. This would be something that would be a lot smoother for VR games because you could physically grab stuff. That'd be much more effective. So what if on top of these gloves that could sense each and every finger on your hand, what if there was a small, tiny little rifle sort of thing that once you put your hand on it would activate as an object in the 3d world around you this rifle would have a stock that goes all the way to your shoulder and makes a third point of anchor contact to your body additionally it would have a pistol grip for your uh, dominant hand and then it would have a forward area for your foregrip it would have no magazine well because there's different types of rifles with different magazine setups in all different locations there's magazines that are behind the pistol grip there's magazines that are a front of the pistol grip so don't have a magazine on there because that'll just confuse the player and that's as simple as it can get I mean all you need is just a rigid object for two hands to go and one shoulder to go and instantly you fixed the the aiming problem in VR gaming now this comes with some weird things you would have to figure out how to basically make it where a player can still pick up a rifle off the ground and put it on his shoulder you could also have this rifle setup be a folding stock almost like an Uzi in real life you know how the, the skeleton stock will fold over the gun you would need some sort of way where you could simulate a gun that didn't have a stock and you would need a method that the player in real life can manipulate the weapon in VR to fold the stock over and make it a non-stock weapon. But this isn't even like the biggest deal in VR shooters at the moment. I still think that there's a lot of improvements to be made until this is a fully uh, fleshed out experience and, and I think that VR shooters are still in a very beta alpha state because you you do run into a lot of tracking glitches there's not much of a high resolution so at a distance you're just shooting at blurs and honestly the resolution would need to be four, eight times higher to make VR shooting really realistic and to make it even feasible for a game like Arma 4 where you would have 300, 400 meter engagement distances it would need a huge improvement in technology in terms of graphics, potential graphics cards and processors, just to be able to pour out that resolution into two different eyes on a VR headset. But there definitely are some games out there that really do show how VR can be and show that VR could be the future of certain parts of games or certain genres of games. For flight sims, VTOL VR is amazing. If you guys have never played VR, but you're planning on getting a headset, Oh my gosh, buy this game. This is one of the first games you should get. It's extremely impressive, and I just love playing this because it's not like DCS VR, where you do have a simulated aircraft, but you have to still move your mouse and joysticks around to control the things in your cockpit. This, you actually physically move your hands around the cockpit and grab stuff and move stuff around. It is awesome. 
And I think that this is a great example because this is a game that doesn't require you to hold something in your hand for most of the time, like a shooter game. This is a game where your controllers are your hands and the hands in the game don't have to hold anything. You just are pressing buttons and you're holding joysticks that are in the same place at all times. So this works with the current controller setup. But what doesn't work is, again, holding a rifle in a game and trying to aim it accurately. So guys, what are your thoughts about VR shooter games? If you've got a VR headset, I would like to know your thoughts down below on this video and see if you agree with me or if you disagree with me. Put it in the comment section down below. I'd like a discussion about this and, and to talk about this with you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day.